Hello class, tonight we're going to learn how to make another part inside Inventor 2019. The part in question is called a support fixture. The dimensions, as they state on the drawing, are dimensioned in inches. The other clues that this is an inch drawing is the fact that small numbers are being used. When you see those small numbers, four diameter, 4.00, 1.00, that's inches. If you ever see that and think millimeters, please don't, because as we know, the metric system is very tiny. So one millimeter is very, very small. So proportion, size, you have to think about that. So sometimes the drawing will not tell you what units of measurement they are. You will have to look at the drawing and take a logical leap of which, what units they are. In this case, they are in inches. <coughs> So this part has features that, that are in one plane and then also in another plane. So we have a face plate over here with two holes in it. We have a face plate back here with one hole in it. And the two are connected with, it's like a side member. So we have to think how can we make something that has things in going in two different directions. This is how we do it. When we go into Inventor, this is going to be a part file. If we click on new part, the default icon, it will be in inches because Autodesk, again, is a product based in the US standards. So when I double click on this, I patiently wait, impatiently, patiently, of course. for a new drawing file to open. The clues that this is in inches, if you go over to tools, you've got application options. Everything in here is in inches. If you go to the part file, that's good. Displays, every, yeah, we're all in standard format. So everything looks good. Drawings, inventor, drawing, okay, standard objects. Everything looks straight. As it, it's going to be an, uh, an inch drawing. We're going to maximize this for a minute. The first thing we do whenever we're inside a brand new file is turn on our planes. It always helps, especially in the beginning when you're learning how to draw. I do recommend that you pick the first X, I'm sorry, YZ plane, hold your control key down, pick center point, right mouse button, do not move your mouse when you're doing this, just right mouse button and visibility, that'll show all your planes. You'll hear me always say go home because of this cute little house right here. When you click on that, it takes you straight to the isometric view. So whenever you hear me say go home, that's what I mean. I don't mean leave the room. You might wish I was meaning that. <laughs> so when we look at our part, the front view is here. Why? Because we respect the cube. And in Inventor, they actually give you the cube, and they do label it front, right, and top. So when I talk about this in my other classes, if you're wondering, oh, that's just for engineering graphics. Oh, that's just for AutoCAD. No, that's that's real. That's why I talk about the cube. Front, right, and top. So this is the front. This is in the same plane. This guy, however, on the side is not. That's going to be drawn off the right plane. Because everything is symmetric, and the reason I say that, these two holes are seven inches apart. The height, let's see, now this is a thickness of one. We have a distance of 2.25. The center to center distance vertical is five. Technically speaking, 
there isn't anything on this drawing that tells us this is actually symmetrical. One can argue that we are missing a very critical dimension here. If we don't know that this center hole is three and a half inches away from this hole, we don't know that this thing is really centered. Because half a seven is three and a half. So when we do our drawing for our customer, make a note of this please, you will need to identify a note that says, that, that, that has an attachment to it, to that dimension, three and a half inches, to say, please verify. Just to make sure that really, that back piece is truly centered to that front piece. Some people might argue, of course it is. It wouldn't be anything else. Well, I'm not the one paying the bill. My customer is, I want to make sure they pay my bill. So I'm gonna verify that information. Okay, guys? So we are, for the sake of tonight's conversation, assuming, we all know what that word means, so we'll be careful with that, that everything is symmetrical. With that in mind, we'll start in the XY plane, the front plane, and we'll create a new sketch right on that plane. Of all things, I'm going to drop a construction line. I'm intentionally leaving my mouse there for a moment so you can read what that is. Construction lines are lines that are used in constructing objects, but they don't, they're not considered a line that is part of part. They're wonderful for, I call it scaffolding, laying things out, setting a, a drawing up for yourself, and they don't get in your way. That is a, a wonderful feature that, that's available in Inventor. When you use construction, you can go ahead and literally just draw a line. I'm gonna draw it up here just so you see what it looks like. And it looks like that, like a yellowish dashed line. If I turn construction off, and it's no longer highlighted, and now I draw a line, it looks like your typical green line. So this line, the product sees as an actual object line, a line that belongs to the object. This line, it does not see in the same manner. This line, it, it just, it's there. It's for reference. So what I like about that is I can go and take this object, hold my control key down, take my center axis here, right mouse button and put a constraint onto this object if i can find it show all constraints let's see if they have any i yeah i should be able to move that. so my constraints so i think i'm going to have to move that over there it is it was hiding again i'm going to take this object hold my control key down take this object go into my constraints and i'm going to collinear them. Oh, it won't let me do it. There it goes. I had to wait till I picked the command and then pick the two objects. Let me do that one more time. Okay, this is horizontal. It's got a horizontal constraint attachment. This one does too. Okay, this belongs to the actual plane. That's what that's referring to. So when I go to constraint, the one that I'm selecting is collinear. Collinear is a constraint used to line things up to each other, literally. Line them up. So when I pick this and I pick my construction line and I pick, which looks like a, like a hidden line, and I pick my, my plane at the bottom, boom, jumps to there. Now you see the constraint, the appearance of that constraint, it just shows dash dash, arrow dash dash, that's what the icon looks like. Up here, it just shows one line with a little dash dash. In it. That's what the icon looks like. The reason I wanted to do that is now I have this object down here. I can go ahead and dimension, that's another type of constraint, dimension it 
to the length where these two holes are, which is seven inches. So I'm going to change that to seven. So it did physically change size. If I go to isometric, if I go home, as I call it, you'll actually see it. Whoops, sorry about that. You'll actually see it there. It's a little dashed line. You'll see it in there. See that? It is right on the plane, so it's visually challenging to look at it, but it's right there as a little dashed line. What that gives me is the center of everything. What I'm missing is making sure that the edge of this part is going to be okay, where are you? centered. If it's not centered, hello. Let me try that one more time. The end point to this edge, I want this centered. But watch how I'm going to do this. I'm insanely lazy. So I'm going to pick that dimension. I'm not going to physically type the number. I'm going to pick my other dimension, which is D0, the first dimension I created on this drawing, and divide it by 2. That's an algebra equation. Dimension D0, like saying dimension X, divided by 2 is what this dimension will be. And then it will give me the out outcome, which is 3.5. So whenever you've covered like a math class function of X, you can solve those function equations in here, FYI. How about that one? Little trick of the trade there. That way, if I ever change my dimension 7, let's say I make it 10, the customer comes back to me and says, no, 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 I want it different. Guess what the other one does? It locks steps with it. Because it remembers the function of x. So I'm taking function of x divided by 2. D, and if you click on it, it'll tell you it's d0, which is that dimension, the, the, the the code assigned to that dimension divided by 2. I can change this to any number. 12.875435458 blah 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 blah. <laughs> and hit OK. And I'll get half of whatever I just typed in. Okay? Doesn't matter what I type in. Whatever value I assign to the one, it directly impacts the other. If you use this tool, it's very, very effective. And it's a beautiful tool that is functions beautifully in Inventor. This is unique to Inventor, this particular feature. So other products is not so simple. I will tell you that up front, because I've tried it. Right. So, oh yeah, this Excel formulas. And I can actually upload Excel formulas into Inventor and I can actually auto-adjust a part based on parameters I want to assign. I can go pretty far with this. I have, professionally. I designed uh, vibration tables that way. I created an Excel spreadsheet, so all you have to do is punch in the numbers. And the, and the actual components and assembly drawings updated themselves. Okay. That's the efficiency factor that you could build in when you do stuff like this. So it's pretty neat, but it does require a bit of um, pre-planning when you do it. For example, if the customer really doesn't want this centered, then me putting that equation in is a very bad choice. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's a big mistake. So that's where the cautions come in. So next. I'm going to, let's see, what do I want to do? I want to build something that might look like some feature I have access to inside Inventor. What shape does this have? It's elongated, right? It's got round, cor round ends, right? Straight center body. So if I go to the line commands, I've got lines and splines, they're not going to help me. I jump over by circles, i got circles, different types of circles, ellipses, nah, that's not going to help me. 
I've got arc commands, that's not going to help me. And then I've got this thing called rectangle, but if I spend a little time going down further, I have things that kind of look like this thing. Slot center to center, slot overall, that was my complaint of another product the other night, that that's the only way it would do so, something. Slot center point, hmm, slot center point, that has opportunity. Then there's slot with an arc involved in it, different types of those, and good old polygon. So of all these, when we think about which one makes the most sense for what we're making tonight, slot center point, because what do we know? We know, let's go back here, we know that, we know everything is centered, and we know that these two slots we're setting, that's the slot shape, we're setting it up to basically be at seven inches and centered in this body. So that's why slot center makes the most sense to use. So I start here and end there and move out, move away. If you stay inside, you'll never see the shape taking shape. But I'm boom. And there we have it. And then we apply a dimensional constraint. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> a dimensional constraint gets to be applied where we can identify this outer radius. And we click on that, and then we get our hands off the mouse, and we leave that whole thing to be blue. Okay, because then all I got to do is type in. 1.5. I don't have to backspace, get it? The only reason it's so fast, let me delete that again. The only reason it's so fast to change that dimension, I pull it out over here, then I click, then I let go of my mouse, right? You're going to hear me, when we do lab time, you're going to hear me tell you, get your hand off the mouse. <laughs> because that's what I, I want you to learn how to do this. You don't have to. A lot of people want to take their mouse, click in here, then they got to highlight it again. Got it? And then type in the number. And I'm insanely lazy. We've had that settled. I don't want you to do that. I want you to learn how to just do that. Let go of your mouse and type in 1.5 and hit enter. And voila, you have your product. So did I even need this line up here? No. Nah. I can, whoops, escape, by the way, to get out of a command. I can click on it and hit my delete key on my keyboard. And that's what I just did. I made a loud sound, so hopefully you've heard, heard it on the speaker. So now that's our basic shape. I'm not going to put the holes in here. Because I don't want to take the AutoCAD approach. Remember, we make all of our features first. Our extrusions, revolves, whatever. And then our secondary operations are cutting into our object. Got it? Build your part first, then cut into it. Try not to do too much up front. It's enough that I made it a slot, because depending on what kind of material I'm going to use, I would still have to cut the material out, but I'm going to ignore that particular element. I have my basic shape, keep your shapes basic, and then we will customize interior cuts and whatnot. So here we go. We do not have to exit the sketch. We don't have to finish sketch. We don't have to do that. We can immediately jump to 3D model. And then just jump over to create. And in this case, we're going to create an extrusion. The product does like to zoom in, so you kind of have to zoom out. Okay. I have a choice in which way I extrude. I can extrude forward or backward. To be honest, it's not going to matter for this conversation, but just so you're aware, you can. And you can also extrude mid-plane. Again, for this particular conversation, it's not going to matter. And the, the fourth option is asymmetric, which means I want to extrude X amount of distance in front and Y amount the distance in back, so I have two different distances. You have a lot of control in the product, so it's a really nice feature. Cool?
I didn't forget your question. So, we're going to thank you for your patience. So, it's one inch. One inch. That's how thick this piece is. I just go one, hit enter. And we're done. Okay, we're done for the. No, I'm sorry. No, we're not. Yes. After you're done? When I go to. When I'm done making my sketch, I jump over to 3D model the tab. The dashed line is the hidden line. So. Once you are done with this, the center line, and then you build this object that was used using the uh, slot command, okay? And then I jump over, when I've done, finished my shape and putting the dimensions, then I jump over to extrude. I'll send it back this time, and that's what the basic shape will look like. The next step will be to make this back shape. Two ways to do it. Remember, there's no, there's at least two ways to make this thing. There's no one way to do this when it comes to the software. So there, there's a few choices. I'm going to take the approach of making what I'll call the letter J, because that's kind of what that side looks like. I cannot mark in here, so I'm just using my, my little hand that's part of PDF to show you this. So over here, if I'm going to jump into my side plane and create a sketch, boom, it rotates. Now, I, I'm pretty confident that it's flush here, so I'm going to let that go. I'm not going to argue that with the customer. I am going to start at my end point, draw a line up, uh, I'm sorry, uh, across, up, over. I'm going to be... Yeah, okay. I'm going to be really lazy and just draw that. Okay? <laughs> I'm going to make this thing five inches tall from top to base. Is that correct or wrong? That's wrong. It's five inches from center to center, which means I'll make this thing five inches from here to the center. This marker will be five inches. The distance, this distance, will be from here to here. That'll be a distance of, that's not two and a quarter, see that? So I don't want to create a new dimension. I want to use the dimension setup they have. So I'm going to go from the front wall to this wall, and that distance is 2.25. So that defines the shape, which is actually this front piece. I'm going to apply a fillet to this shape. So should I do it later? I could do it one of two ways. I could put a fillet in now, or I could actually use the chamfer command not the chamfer command i'm sorry the fillet command in 3d model because the fillet command exists there for, for tonight i'm going to do do it here under the sketch the fillet that inside fillet is a radius of 0.5 and then i'm literally just pick my two objects and it makes the radius for me that's how radius works and I'm good, That's, I'm done with that, so I can X out of it. I need another feature of it out here that is an inch away, an inch thick. And I'm going to use, out of the modify command, something called offset, offset. This is the same offset command you would see in AutoCAD. The icon in AutoCAD changed to look like a U on its side. Here, it stayed the same. To me, it looks like a little UFO. I don't know why. It just does. 
I'm going to pick my object, and I'm actually going to move out. And you'll notice that it literally, whoops, I should not have eliminated that much of it. One second. Let me try that one more time. It's got a piece on the inside it's trying to, I just deleted that piece. When I use offset, I pick this object and I pull it back. See what it does? It will extend that. If I let go of my mouse and just type in the number one, drops in the dimension at the same time. Saves, saves you a ton of time. Time is money. Okay, just remember that. I'm reminded of that by, by a class I'm taking. Stop taking so long to finish a job. <laughs> what I'm learning! Eh, yeah, speed up. And there you go. You've got this shape in the back. Now, I can jump over to the 3D model, jump over to extrude, and here's an example where I do want symmetric. I'm going to identify the width of this object is not unknown. The width of this is actually defined by this other object here, the diameter. Diameter 3, I'm sorry, 4, hello, i got to learn how to read. Diameter 4 is also the width of this object, 4. So now what you have, if I go home, you have the basic shape. It is missing the top element. If I go to the front face of this object, click on it, and create a sketch. See that? Edit sketch, share sketch, make sketch visible, create sketch. I can literally then draw a circle centered. And the reason it's centered is you see that little arrow with a little line with a red dot in it? there to there or I can make a tangent you see that little circle with the little line in the video I like to say it looks like a little graduate little head with a little graduate item there you go see that all we need is eyes and a smile <laughs> it's a head with a hat on it sideways this if I go to 3d model and extrude it I pick this object. It wants to extrude forward, but I, could, I can easily pick a, not a distance, but to next. And I could tell you, now here's an example of where we don't want it to automatically assume to be a cut. So instead of cutting the object, I still want it to add material. So I can say two, and I want it to add material to that point. I don't want it to cut material at that point. I want it to add material. See the color difference? When you're cutting, it turns red, and it gives you the, the imagery, the silhouette of a piece being removed. When you're adding material, join, you'll see it's green and looks a little solid. When you hit OK, there you get that back piece. Now, did I go far enough or did I mess up? I messed up. Because this doesn't stop with the thickness of this part, it actually goes two inches. So in my case, I messed up. And to fix that mess up, I can pick the item inside my model, just like what I did. I can go up here, I'm gonna edit that extrusion. You cannot pick the side wall of the model and edit the correct extrusion. You have to pick a feature that belongs to that extrusion and edit that one. So two is not a good idea. I really do need distance, and the distance is two. And you hit OK. Now that I've built all my basic geometry into my part, now I can start cutting. Now is when to go into the cutting tools in 3D model and modify adding holes, or if I wanted to, fillets. For example, the fillets were in here, right? You notice that? I let it be inside of the sketch for the purpose of showing you, when I go and edit that sketch, showing you how to use that offset tool. That's the real reason why I did that. 
Okay. Otherwise, I would agree with you thinking, well, didn't you, teacher, didn't you tell us that we should build the basic shape and then whittle away at it? You're right. But here's an example where maybe you're more efficient if you do it this way. So, and maybe you're not. That'll be up to whatever the client makes changes to the part. You'll, for all the effort that you try to, how shall I say it, do Marvin the mind reader with your customer, our customers change their minds. So we're not going to be able to presume how they want this thing built. So now we jump over the hole. It doesn't matter whether I pick the face of the object first and go to the hole command, or whether I go to the hole command first and then pick the object. The order of operation does not matter in this software product. It does in other software products, but not this one. So when I go to the whole command, I have my choices. In this case, they're pretty, you know, there. So let's, uh, this is just a hole through it. These are all just simple holes. This one's a two inch diameter though, and these are not. So the key is to find the center. So placement, if we look at placement, there's select the position. There's the type of hole. There's some advanced settings. And we think to ourselves, hmm, okay, placement. So I wanna make a hole and I wanna pick somewhere on this face. So if I'm random about it, that's what I get. Well, then I have to apply some dimensions and that's too much work. So no, I don't want it there. I hit the delete button to add, cancel that. What I want to do is pick maybe, maybe what? Hmm. What type of positions do I, can I choose from? Are there any? No. I don't have any presets in my, uh, toolbox here either. So let's see. So I'm going to pick this. Let's go to the front plane so I can pick these properly. I'm going to pick somewhere here. I'm going to make the hole larger. That's the easy part. So I can change that in here too. And that's 1.5. But is it really where I want it to be? No. No, it's not. So I'm thinking to myself, how do I get it to be dead on in position when I only have select, one selected, that's my only option for, for where to put this thing. So if I go home, I don't have any other way of identifying this except applying something all dimensions. Another way I can do it, if I go to my options up here, let's see what I've got. I put what options? Show tabs. There's favorites. We don't have any favorites. Fasteners, those are for different types of holes. But when we go to properties, we just have this. We don't have any other choices. For this command right now because we've done nothing to prep this this part what i would recommend when you go to modify before you jump into the whole command let's say i pick this face first and i jump into the whole command there's my face but i don't again nothing happened so that doesn't work I need to define what, where my hole's gonna go. So if I go to the front plane, I'm gonna pick this face, and of all things, I'm gonna create a sketch. And here I'm gonna show you how to share a sketch. In extrusion one, we have this basic shape right here, okay? Project geometry from that sketch. Whoops, first I have to have it visible, sorry. Right mouse button and make it visible, that's my fault, sorry. Once that sketch is available for you to see, I can, if I want to, project geometry from that sketch 
to be in this sketch. That will allow me, if I turn this off now, that will actually allow me the opportunity to use a piece of that. Did I do it right? Let's find out. Nope, I did not. Because it's not in there. Not yet. One more time. That's going to allow me the opportunity to use the sketch to help me make my other sketch. The purpose of that sketch, if I pick, for example, these elements, the pur whole purpose of that is to be able to find the centers. Hold on, right mouse button. It's in the middle of the thing. I hit escape a few times so I could turn visibility off is to be able to use those elements for the purpose of making my holes. They're yellow. They're yellow, which means they're construction, just like the construction line I showed you before. If I now go to 3D model and create a hole, I actually have a spot right there to drop my hole in, and I have a spot right there to drop my hole. And then I can go ahead and identify what size that hole is. And it literally drops them on target. So I'm using my other elements to make these holes exactly where they're supposed to be. I have to have those visible to me to do that with. So that's what I wanted to show you. I've got to have that sketch visible to me to do that. So you see how that one's visible? If I go to modify hole, I can use it directly. I don't even have to pop it out. That's the other way. And I, into another sketch is what I mean. Bring it out to another sketch. Then I hit 2.0 as the diameter and hit OK. So those are your two ways of getting those holes on target. And then you can turn these sketches off. When you share a sketch, that's where you see a little hand underneath the icon for a sketch. You'll see my mouse is right there. If you look on the screen, you see the mouse where it says like sketch three. It's using the same sketch for two different objects. That's what that, that's referring to. See, sketch three right there. There's sketch four. That one I did as a, as a project out, remember that? If I delete that and not share it, just, where's the delete button? I'm in the middle of something else, aren't I? Nope. There you go. I can delete you. So I'll delete everything. See how this one is shared, these two are shared. If I want to share this shape, see that? I have to make the easiest way is make it visible. And then when I go to the whole command, I can use it because it's there for, for use. Okay? You see how I can use it now, but I couldn't before? When you make it visible, see, now you've got sketch one is shared. Shared, fully constrained. There it is. See the little hand? See that little hand underneath the sketch? That's what that means. I'm sharing that sketch. Visually, that's what that means. Verbally, well not verbally, but it also, like a little tag appears if you leave your mouse there. Shared fully constrained. Shared fully constrained. It'll tell you that too. So when you see that in the future, you'll know what that means. Whether it's here because you made it, or whether it's at work and you're dealing with somebody else's drawing and they did it. Okay? That's how you know that's a shared item. And then you could turn those plain I'm sorry, turn those sketches off so they they don't dominate your picture. You don't see those sketches in your imagery. And that is how you make this part. If you look on that side, there you go, all the way around.
Now, there are some things we don't know. For example, this back side, sharp. See those sharp edges? Maybe they're not sharp. We can't tell. We can tell this is a sharp corner, but I don't know if the underside is. That's a question for the customer. Is this sharp back here, or is it chamfered? We don't know. Or filleted, whatever. We don't know because they haven't told us. So for now, this is the project that, that we have, and this is how we would make it. And then we have questions for the customer.